regular meeting number 24 is now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Mitch Brown, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we're honored to have Reverend John Edgar from Church for All People here this evening with us. Welcome, Reverend Edgar. Thank you. Good to be here with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the source of human goodness, we humbly ask that each of us who has assembled for the proceedings of this city council meeting might feel your presence, O Lord, and be guided by your righteousness. Inspire us, dear God, to take to heart the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who wisely observed we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we will perish together as fools. Tonight we pray, O oh Lord, that you pour forth your whispered words of wisdom into the waiting ears and open minds of our council members and their president. Continue to weave them together as an effective force for positive change. Guide them in their deliberations, inspire them to make decisions that promote the unfolding of your kingdom here in the city of Columbus, even as it is in heaven. May your wisdom also flow outward, washing over all who are gathered in these hallowed chambers. Be especially close to those who will make presentations or speak upon various matters. Temper their words with civility and shape their requests to be in harmony with your will, O Lord. May all that is said and done tonight extend your love, your protection, and your comfort to those who are most at risk in our community. Inspire each and every one of us, council members and individual citizens, to do what we can to care for those who are vulnerable and troubled. Be with those who will sleep outside in the rain tonight and those who will go to bed hungry. Give us courage to respond to the persistent evil of gun violence in our community and offer us inspiration as we search for solu solutions to the crisis of opioid addiction across our neighborhoods. All this we pray, trusting that your spirit is already at work within each of our hearts and souls. Amen. Amen. Good to be Thank with you. you Thank you, Pastor. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown Page Remy Stinziano, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown Page Remy Stenziano, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other uh, communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Are there any resolutions by members of council? Councilmember Mitch Brown. No, sir. Council member Remy. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Council President Harden. I'd like to invite to the podium Bruce 
Cadwallader. <laughs> it's supposed to roll right off my tongue. I didn't get a chance to practice it enough. As I introduce resolution 0126X 2018 to honor and recognize April 2018 as National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Children are our future leaders and most vulnerable assets. Within and without the city of Columbus, children play vital role in our future success, prosperity, and quality of life. Child abuse is defined as all forms of physical and or emotional ill treatment, sexual abuse, neglect, or exploitation resulting in actual or potential harm to the child's health, survival, development, or dignity. The City of Columbus is committed to ha giving every child a chance to succeed and to ensuring that every child grows up in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment that is free from abuse and neglect. The prevention of child abuse and neglect is a community responsibility, and we are calling on all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation in, in our efforts to support families, thereby by preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. Uh, Bruce, I'll go ahead and let you have the floor. President Hardin, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting us be here tonight to accept this proclamation on behalf of our director, Chip Spinning, and more than 800 employees at Franklin County Children's Services, where the work never stops. We had over 32,000 calls for service last year for child abuse and neglect. No zip code in Franklin County was not affected. This, this problem is pervasive in our society, and it is affected by the opioid crisis, as mentioned by the by the pastor. Just a few statistics you might be interested in. Of those 32,000 calls, it resulted in over 11,700 investigations by our child welfare caseworkers. And we have ongoing services for over 14,000 children ongoing. April is a month of child abuse prevention awareness. We try to get the message out every April to the community that we need your help, all of your help in addressing this problem, reporting it, but also we like to strengthen families and address the problem at its roots. We're here to help families and provide resources for them. And the, the city is very much a partner with us on that. So we thank you for uh, letting us be here tonight and we thank you for the proclamation. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Council Member Brown. Bruce, I know you speak to the issue about child abuse on a physical level, but what about on a mental level, the role that you play with regards to uh, post-traumatic stress associated with child abuse? Yes, as I said, we can't do this on our own, so we contract with several local agencies as a resource. We have family counseling. We have, uh, there are also many other kinds of abuse. You might mention neglect, medical neglect, sexual abuse. So we address all those issues. And we, uh, we do that from three different locations here in Franklin County. Any other comments or questions from my colleagues? If not, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. Adopt it. Thank you. Thank you. Copy of the annual report is on your desk. Oh, awesome. Yes. Thank you. And that's all I have this evening, President Hardin. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Page. Thank you, Councilmember. President Pro Tem. Thank you, President Hardin. At this time, I would like to invite back to uh, Council Chambers, Ohio Health Capital City Half Marathon Race Director David Babner to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0128X-2018 to recognize and honor the 15th anniversary of the Ohio Health Capital City Half Marathon, which is taking place this Saturday, April 28th. The Ohio Health Cap City Half Marathon was founded in Columbus in 2004 by its parent company, M3S Sports, and is proud to be a Columbus original with courses that provide, as Mr. Babner always tells us, the best tour of Columbus on two feet and highlights the neighborhoods and districts that make our city so unique. The race has steadily grown into one of the largest and most recognized standalone half marathons in the United States, and this year we'll have participants from 48 states and five nations. It's become the ultimate spring celebration of the active, healthy lifestyle in our community and has grown from 25 runners and walkers in its first year to an expected 14,000 
runners and walkers in 2018. And while I've never done it, I know we have a number of city staff uh, that always participate, and it's great to see them run by. Uh, I'm part of the 45,000 people expected to visit downtown Columbus surrounding neighborhoods and generate more, generate more than $6.5 in visitor spending in restaurants, retail, transportation, recreation, and lodging. The Half City Marathon benefits the Ohio Health Foundation, and this year will earmark a portion of proceeds to purchasing therapy dogs for Ohio Health Hospitals. So it's my honor to welcome you back. I'll let you speak before we uh, formally pass the resolution. Well, Podium thank you very much. Council President Hardin, President Pro Tem Stenziano, other members of council, directors, uh, and staff, thank you so much for this recognition. Uh, the Ohio Health Capital City Half Marathon, I can't believe it, it's celebrating its 15th anniversary. I must have been 15 when I started it back in 2004. Back in 2004, we actually started and finished on Neal Avenue in the Arena District. We had just over 2,000 people. This year, we'll have almost 15,000 people towing the line on High Street. Uh, we could not do it without your tremendous support from the Division of Police, Division of Fire, Columbus Parks and Recreation, the City Services team, and all, its, and all our residents. Um, it really has turned into a huge community celebration of health and wellness and the healthy active lifestyle. That's what we, that was our mission when we started it back in 2004 and continues our mission today. Uh, our focus, as you know, la in the last two years we celebrated uh, the national championships here in Columbus. We took a regional event and gave it a national reputation and brought runners from all over the, all over the world here. Uh, Two years ago, who came in second place in the Capital City Half Marathon was Des Linden in the women's group. Last Monday, she won the Boston Marathon and was the first woman to do so in 35 years. So we're proud of that accomplishment, but even more, all the lives we've touched trying to get uh, healthy and active along the uh, same mission as Columbus Recreation and Parks. So this year, our mission is, and our focus is to focus on all things local brands and local partners from Franklinton's own land grant brewery, making our own 13.1 beer, uh, to homage making our participant t-shirts, mm. to fifth generation Buyers Auto, of course Diamond Cellar, Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, and of course Ohio Health. Uh, we're proud to call these uh, local companies partners. Cap City was made in Seabus 15 years ago. The M3S Sports offices are in Columbus. I went to law school here in Columbus, uh, and we're proud to be a huge part of this community. Uh, we've had a remarkable 15 years celebrating the healthy, active lifestyle in Columbus, and we hope to continue for at least another 15 years. Again, thank you so much for this recognition tonight. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? I do, and I also mentioned it in the back, want to thank M3S Sports for your role with the bounce. Well, As I you. mentioned, my son would still be bouncing, <laughs> but your role to be part of what made the Final Four so special. I appreciate your ongoing leadership. Congratulations on the 15th anniversary. And with that, I'll move for adoption. Okay. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And Council President Harden, I just wanted to thank you too for your contribution to our event guide this year. Oh, we got your, a very your nice smiling speech. face there and your letter to all the uh, folks from those 48 different states and three countries that are going to be joining We're us. We're really excited. I say there are not too many uh, more beautiful things in Columbus than standing on that stage and seeing those 14,000 faces down uh, the street. It's a beautiful sight. So thank you for what you do. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Uh, are there any representatives from the Air Commissions, Mr. From the hilltop, are there any comments from? All right. Um, are there any other requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we have a motion to waive reading of the titles of this 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Second. Clerk, call the roll, please. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Harden. Will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for the first reading? Public Safety Committee Ordinance 957-2018, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinance 933-2018, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 674, 698, 907, 910, 921, 947, 948, 949, 950, 1032, and 1037-2018, Rules and Reference Committee Ordinance 1042-2018. The, the following ordinances appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those ordinance numbers into the record? 
Resolutions of Expression 122X, 127, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 119, 120X-2018. Public Safety Committee, Ordinance 955-2018. Technology Committee, Ordinance 883-2018. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 847, 880, and 999-2018. Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0095, 98, 99, 100, 101, and 102-2018. Seeing no speakers for uh, the consent action, are there any comments? May I get a motion for approval of these items as needed as consent actions? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Arden. We will now proceed with the reading of the 30-day tabled and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. Uh, council Member Remy uh, will chair that committee. Thank you very much. This evening we have ordinance number 116X 2018 to accept the capital improvements program 2018 to 2023 as described herein as the primary guide for future capital improvements budget ordinances. We do have a speaker on this this evening. I'd like to um, call forth Nathaniel Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins, Wilkins, welcome. Um, you'll have three minutes to speak on the topic. 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan George Wilkins, the chairman of solely vacant independent property in North Linden area. Um, I would like to see a longer time for capital improvement for this future development. Uh, instead of 2018 to 2023, I'd like to see it begin and start in 2018 to 2025. I will be for, for this if that continue, be continued from 2018 to 2025, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Yes, President Hardin. Thank you, Chair Remy. Just wanted to take a moment again to thank um, Council Member Chair Brown um, and you then for stepping in in her absence, uh, and all the staff, um, the mayor's administration for the work that they put in on this capital budget. I uh, was very um, appreciative of the community engagement we had, had four community meetings um, and uh, uh, heard a lot from different residents about the great uh, projects and opportunities to, uh, to work with uh, neighborhoods to continue to strengthen uh, our community. And so just a big thank you to everyone. And uh, again, thank you, Councilman Remy, for your leadership as well. If there are no other comments or questions, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. Pass. Next, we have ordinance number 1010-2018 to adopt a capital improvements budget for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2018, or until such a time as a new capital improvements budget is adopted, establishing a project budget for capital improvements requiring legislative authorization in 2018 to repeal ordinance number 1124-2017 as amended. This ordinance establishes the 2018 capital improvements budget in the amount of $1,013,000. 1 million th sorry about that <laughs> there, it is a big number um, the budget represents a plan for the expenditure of monies in 2018 for a variety of capital improvements projects this budget represents new funding in the amount of 719 million seven hundred thousand and carryover funding in the amount of 293 million seven hundred thousand the budget also includes a record number of uh, funding for street repaving at 39 million. Water and sewer improvements make up 55% of the $557 million of the budget. Five million of this will be for Affordable Housing Alliance to leverage additional funding to support affordable housing in Columbus. Two and a half million for new sidewalks around schools. 20 million for a new Linden Re Community Recreation Center. A million for a gunfire detection system as part of the comprehensive neighborhood safety strategy. As uh, President Hardin mentioned, we had over four, we had four public hearings and over 200 residents and attending, providing feedback and asking questions. Very appreciative of that opportunity to engage all members of our community throughout the city to learn about their individual needs. Um, it was very well received to take to address their feedback and know that this is an ongoing process. 
The capital budget represents investments in our neighborhoods and our goals are to make this process and these investments accessible and understandable for all of our residents. Uh, before I throw it over to Director Lombardi, I'd like to thank the Mayor, Mayor Ginther, Auditor Kilgore, Finance and Management Director, Director Joe Lombardi, Deputy Director Dan G, Rob Newman, Kyle Severhart, and City Council, of course, um, Matt Erickson from our Legislative Research Office. Director, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Uh, thank you, President Hardin, Council Member Remy, other Council Members. Um, as the Council Member said, this uh, budget does uh, reflect the priorities of not only the administration but also of City Council. I too want to thank uh, all of you for your input, uh, obviously the City Auditor who we work closely with uh, throughout this process, and my colleagues and their staff who do all the grunt work. Um, Kyle Seaver and uh, Rob Newman and my staff really put together this uh, monster, as I like to call it, but uh, they do all the hard work and uh, they uh, should be appreciated for that. I also want to thank Council Member Brown for her leadership and uh, congratulate her on her uh, new uh, baby. Um, and, and to just answer Mr. Wilkins's question, uh, we do a five-year CIP each year, so next year we'll run it out to 2024, and then the following year we'll be out to 2025. Uh, but as you said, 55% of this budget is public utilities, which is supported by user fees. No income tax dollars are used there. And uh, as, as far as those projects that will be in the general fund, in uh, I think it was 1956 that uh, uh, the policymakers decided to use 25% of uh, income tax dollars and put it into a fund called the Special Income Tax Fund, which helps pay for the debt for those. So, again, I want to thank all of you for uh, your support and the mayor for his leadership and, and the community for allowing us to come out into their neighborhoods and talk about the, the projects that we are uh, having in this calendar year. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? President Pro Tem Stenziano. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Just kind of echo what we've been hearing. I think we all recognize budgets are about priorities, and this budget particularly highlights how neighborhoods are a priority of not only the mayor's administration, uh, but this council. We heard a lot of good feedback in the hearings, and I know there's a number of projects in here that came from neighborhood con conversations we had throughout the past year. So I encourage uh, residents to continue to engage. Uh, we're listening and continuing and really appreciate uh, the leadership of Director Lombardi, Otter Kilgore, uh, Chairwoman Brown, Vice Chair Remy, uh, to get us to this point. Uh, it's an important budget as Chair of Utilities, uh, recognize the large portion that Director mentioned, uh, but those are things that will continue to make our community and city thrive. And so really uh, appreciate the work that your staff uh, and the entire council staff with the administration put in uh, to get us to this vote. Thank you very much. Anybody else? If not, then I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. Pass. All right. If uh, that's all I have tonight in finance, if with your permission, I'll move on to Health and Human Services. Please. Tonight in Health and Human Services, we have an ordinance number 0891-2018 to authorize the Office of the Mayor to enter into various contracts for Celebrate One Healthy Beginnings at Home Housing Stabilization Program for Pregnant Women. To authorize the expenditure of 346764 from the General Government Grants Fund to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Codes, Chapter 329. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. Thank you very much. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Chair Remy. The next uh, committee to come before council is the Rules and Reference Committee. I chair that committee. At this point, I would turn the uh, committee over to Council Member Mitch Brown. Thank you, President Hardin. Um, uh, Ordinance 10053-2018 to amend sections 2329-13 and 2329-14 and to enact section 2329-15 of the Columbus City Code establishing regulations for hookah lounges and their operations. I'm requesting to table indefinitely. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. The uh, legislation is tabled. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Chair Brown. Seeing no further uh, business to come before council, can I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Hardin. 
Council is adjourned. We will take uh, speakers momentarily.